It's frame fab time. Now this will challenge the twist in our challenger. <laughs> and it's prime time as our great Camaro heads to the booth for a coat of velvet. Muscle car and our 70 Hemi Challenger is making a whopping 610 horse. So we gotta stiffen up our unibody. But in order to do that, we gotta build some frame connectors and replace a rotted out frame rail. And we've almost got our year one crate Camaro completely dialed in. Now we're building a show quality car here, so we've really taken the time to concentrate on things like the gaps, the panel to panel alignment, and our laser straight body lines. So I'm gonna jump on the trunk of this thing, get it finished so we can get it in our paint booth today. This muscle car is 36 years old, and it's got something that all muscle cars have got, rot. So you know what? This floor pan is out of there. The plasma cutter is my favorite tool. That 36-year-old rot is gone. You want to cut the floor pan out in small sections. And remember to leave a short lip about two or three inches on the car edges so you have a place to support the new pan when you're ready to weld it in. Here, I got a present for you. <laughs> I better get a tetanus shot. Going with square tubing, I see. Yes, I am. That's cool. I mean, there's really no structural advantage over round or anything else. Plus, the underside of the car is all square. I think it'll actually match a little bit better. I like it because it gives you a nice flat surface to mount your lines to and everything, you know? Cool, man. I dig it. Cool. Why don't you sand for a while? I can do that. Subframe connectors help eliminate flexing. If you're adding performance to a unibody car, they're a must. We'll use eighth inch plates on both sides of the floor to anchor the connectors. Our 700 pound crate Hemi puts out 650 pounds of torque. Without frame connectors, it twists this car apart. These babies are going to stiffen this thing up big time. <laughs> you know, we were talking about bracing that wheelhouse with inch and a half tube. Yeah, yeah. I love seeing this because we could drill like a perfect inch and a half hole and then, you know, come oh, through yeah. here. Oh yeah, come through there and, yeah. and, and, and no one will see it. And we can access it, right. And then, yeah. and then we'll just weld around that hole on the other side. So it'll be like a perfect, Boop. the tube will just disappear inside the frame basically. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. when this is removed, we can put that plate on the back like we were talking about. And then it'll Weld be like, it to yep. it, put the floor back on and, and people no are like, oh my God, what happened to that tube? It just disappears. <laughs> it'll be awesome. That's what I'm talking about. Now this will challenge the twist in our Challenger. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so funny at times. You can shut off the camera because I'm going to the cold saw right now. She's a good, she's a good. Now it's time to replace the rotted out frame rail that we've got. Mopars are notorious for this. What happens is you get dirt and moisture in there, it sits and bam, you've got rot. So year one supplies this baby because they saw a need for it. So what I did is I made a template, I'll transfer it onto there, trim it up nice and neat, poof, done. You can slip the new rail over the rusted section, but it's always good to clean out that old rot. This is part of the frame and it needs to be fixed right.
Let's see what surprises we've got. I'll take what's behind door number two, Wink. Adding angles gives you more surface area to weld on, which gives you a stronger joint. We'll just plasma out the section we need. Yeah! I'm almost done, dude. We'll gusset the new section for extra strength. Ha! Voila! That, my friends, is how you fix an e-body frame rail. Paint prep tips coming up. for a second, all right? I'm busy! That's enough welding and grinding for one day, all right? Guys, we're gonna get back on our crate Camaro and break in our new muscle car paint booth, because today we're gonna prime and block this bad boy. So let's take a look back at how we got to this point. We took the time to hang and adjust all the panels, and then to go ahead and make the gaps perfect, we added metal and ground them to make all the gaps uniform. We used dual action sanders to create a mechanical adhesion on the whole car for a skim coat of body filler that bridged the gaps for show quality panel alignment. Then we finish the bodywork off with a final pass of glaze to fill in any sort of porosity. After that, we use a cutoff wheel and sanding block to finish off precise gaps that really complement these perfectly aligned panels. All right, we got a lot of time in this thing, but it's gotta be right. I mean, this car is a showpiece. Year one's gonna take it on the power tour, it's gonna be at SEMA, and it's eventually gonna end up in somebody's garage when we give it away on our sweepstakes. So Lou, give me a hand giving this thing prepped. Let's roll. Come to Nashville, they said. Work with Lou. He's not crazy, they said. Hey, they told me I wouldn't have to do body work. I don't want to know in my contract who told me that lie. We're wiping the car down with wax and grease remover. We're using this pressurized sprayer from Matco. It's great, you just apply it with this, and wipe it off with your rag. But if you don't have a pressurized sprayer, just get a can of pre-cleaner or wax and grease remover, dump it on one rag, wipe it on, and make sure you wipe it off with the other rag and continually flip the rag to keep a clean surface on the paint so you're not smearing the stuff you just wiped off into another part of the panel. I read somewhere that this stuff may cause birth, can uh, birth defects only in the state of California. So my question would be, what about the other 49 states? We're gonna tape and paper this car up before it goes in the booth because there's some areas we don't want primer on. Now take your time when you do this. Think your way through it so that you can still do things like open the doors and the hood and keep the primer off the areas you wanna keep clean. Teamwork. We're using this green tape and paper from 3M. This stuff's great because the paper won't let paint bleed through and the tape has a high adhesion and it doesn't leave a fuzzy edge when paint blows by it. Alright, hang on, hang on. Alright, let's do this. So we got a little bit. There we go. Just however. Yeah, tight enough so it's not whipping around on the sprayers. You know, I used the calibrated eyeball once again to get the angle of the dangle. 
Let's get the car in, man. Open the doors for the first time. You are so manly. Later, our crate Camaro gets a coat of prime. Welcome back guys, it's time to start mixing up some primer. And whenever you're messing around with these paint chemicals, always follow the manufacturer's instructions for safety. Yeah, one time I had a really nasty reaction and it put me in the hospital, so you gotta be careful. Primer surfacer usually needs to be thinned out a little. Then you wanna stir it in a figure eight pattern to make sure all the material is suspended. Pour it in through a filter, stir in a few drops of hardener, it's ready for the gun. Velvus makes a gun for each step of the painting process. You got your primer gun, your paint gun, and your clear gun. Now these are all HVLP guns, which stands for high volume, low pressure. And pretty soon we're going to be putting one of these bad boys to the test. But before I step into the booth, I'm going to step into something really high tech. 3M's fresh air system. When I'm wearing this thing, I won't even know I'm around paint fumes. I feel like I'm in chemistry class. Voila. We're getting ready to bust open this spray booth that we've got. It's a Coleman. So it pulls air down from the top and it actually goes under the car and goes out at the base and it keeps the dust off the car because it actually sucks everything down in the floor. So it's pretty high tech stuff. <laughs> Cute suit. Be quiet. I'm closing the door. I like to start by laying down a number of thin coats on all the edges, like the hood, the trunk, the doors, and the jams. The nice thing about primer is that it gives you a consistent color that lets you read all the surfaces. As you spray, overlap the coats for consistent coverage. HVLP guns are more efficient and they use less primer which helps on material cost. You want to lay on several thin coats building up the primer so it fills in minute imperfections. You're going to need a good base of primer in order to block the car. Unwrapping a Christmas present. What do you think about that? I never got a 69 Camaro for Christmas. Oh wow, I'm on paper. All for leaving this thing mustard yellow? Raise your hand. Okay. McDonald's is a place to rock. <laughs> You've seen us using a lot of different types of sandpaper on this car, and that's because sanding is a coarse defined process. We'll start by shaping the filler with 36 grit, then get rid of the 36 grit scratches with 80 grit, and so on and so on. And basically what we'll end up doing is finishing this primer with 320. We start with 36 grit, which is here, and this is just to rough in our shapes. Then we get rid of the 36 grit scratch with 80, and so on and so on with 180, and now with primer we're going to be sanding it with 320. The primer is going to help you see all the details. Before blocking, use finish glaze to fill in any small pinholes or scratches. Something like this has sandpaper on it. And it's the same principles that we were using when we blocked it with filler, right. only on a much, instead of now instead of working an area, we're going to work the whole side of the car. So if you make a move like this, go all the way down. You know what I mean? Got Dude, I hope you ate your Wheaties. It's time for more sanding. You have no clue what Wheaties are. They're slick. All right, it's on. I'm going to show you how to do it's this. It's on. We'll just see who tuckers out first. <laughs> Synchronized masks. <laughs> Hey, 
And these are all the uneven surfaces that would show up if we went ahead and painted this car without blocking it. Everywhere that it's shiny, believe it or not. And areas like this chuckle didn't even show up before I started seeing it. This is really showing me what I need to see. That's what primer's main function is, aside from the fact that it builds, is to show you the imperfections in the car. When you're blocking, keep your body lines sharp by protecting them with tape. Well, we're out of time and I think Lou's out of gas, so. <laughs> Don't blame me. The reality of it is, is we've got hours of work sanding this thing. So you know what? We're out of here, later. Adios.